Portugal are through to the quarterfinals of Euro 2024 after beating Slovenia 3-0 on penalties. That was not the best penalty shootout you'll ever see from Slovenia. Um, need to give a big shout out to Diogo Costa, the man of the moment. The man saved three penalties. We saw four penalties saved in this game and three of them were in the penalty shootout. The other one was Ronaldo, who missed his in open, well, not open play, but within, uh, before the penalty shootout, just before halftime of extra time. He really, really needs that goal, to be honest. He's really looking for it, to be fair to him. But I don't know, man. Like, at some point, his lack of movement up front, it's just really becoming costly for Portugal. I get it. You're not going to bench him. He's the greatest player in your ever in Portugal history and all of those things. And he's the oldest. He's the captain. This thing of playing in Saudi Arabia has made him just want to keep playing in Europe. He loves playing in front of actual fans, you know, and not 200 fans. Um... Yeah, I think they're just less mobile. They Slo- Slovenia actually played with a 4 2 the entire game. That back four of um, Balkovic, who I need to give a shout out to that entire back four, Bijol, Druksic, and Kanichnik. Kanichnik to me has been one of the players of the tournament in terms of, um, well, standout players of the tournament. He, he Like when he goes forward, he's, he, he's so good going forward. Today, the game plan was not to go forward. Today, the game plan required him to actually defend. I didn't I didn't see this part of his game earlier. Like, today, he's shown me a different part of his game. And they really defended well. But playing Ronaldo up front means it's easier to defend. His best attribute at this point, he's not going to run in behind the defense. He's he's still really sharp because he can, he can really beat the offside trap. So, you need to be careful about that. As we saw in the last game, he assisted Bruno. But he's not going to constantly run at you. His best attribute at this point, he's an aerial threat. Once you nullify that, you've basically taken out 60-70% of what he does well on the field at this age, right? He's still a very, very big threat in the box, but he's, I don't know, man. Like, he, he makes everything else not flow. The, the offense is not flowing. There's no mobility up front. There's no, but I get it, man. He's he's the best Portuguese player ever. You have to play him there. You have to, I, I get all of that, but... For me, I, I just feel like it makes them very predictable. Slovenia literally played with a 4-4-2 and they were defending with a 4-4-2. At times, they'd have um, Spora dropping into midfield or Sheshko as well. Sheshko has also quite, he's been quite impressive. I feel like any team that got him, be it United, Chelsea, Arsenal, any of those teams, he adds something that m- many of the strikers don't have. Um, well, maybe Kai Havertz in terms of movement and just work rate. But... Um, Hoilun has that movement, but he doesn't track back as much as uh, Sheshko would willingly, right? Um, but again, someone like Hoilun, that's what the game plan tells him. That's what Ten Hag tells him. You can drop, but not too much. So maybe we also haven't seen him in that sense. But a team like Chelsea, he'd thrive. He would thrive. Um, actually, thrive in all teams. But yeah, he's so mobile. He literally plays like a, as a fifth midfielder. He was playing at the fifth, fifth mid, like a fifth midfielder at times for Slovenia just to nullify the threat of um, Bruno Fernandes and Vitinha coming in from deep. And to be honest, there were Vitinha and Bruno were quiet. Bruno, in fact, I feel like Bruno has always, Bruno has a knack. He has this ability of standing out when things are not going well, right? It will be, he'll always find a way to influence the game one way or another. He really struggled to do that here. And that's the one thing I feel like, in these moments, he needs to, he just needs to step up. Bernardo Silva as well, ugh, it's just quiet. Like the person who really cost them today was Rafael Leao. Rafael Leao had many chances, one on ones and stuff like that. Like, well, one one on one and chances to run at them, make a good decision, a good pass to create a, a chance, but he just failed them. Um, the one thing I'll say about Cheshko is he had the chance, bro. You had the chance. You had the chance. Yeah, you had the chance to make it. A very interesting finale to the game, but he missed. It was Pepe at the back. Guys, Pepe is 41 years old, and he showed it in that period of extra time. To be fair to Roberto Martinez, he didn't waste time, brought him off immediately. He's like, nope, I'm not going to see that again. So he slips. The ball goes to Sheshko. He's one-on-one with the keeper. And I, Diego Costa actually just read the ball very well. I need. We need to give props to Diego Costa. That save was... I mean, it ensured that they're going into penalties. Then when you go to penalties, three amazing penalty saves. 
sometimes penalties, you say it's luck, right? You say that they're just bad penalties. But if the keeper can save three times in a row, it means he's doing something right. Like, that keeper is lethal. And Keenan also, shout out to Keenan. Keenan from Box to Box was on the live and he said, yeah, he won't save three penalties in a game, in a UCL game. Like, don't doubt him. And sure enough, came in here and saved three penalties in a row. Basically, just shut down this penalty shootout. Took out the drama in it. Took out all the... Uh, sucked out all the nervousness and anxiety the Portuguese team might have had. Especially how, since Slovakia, Slovenia were the first team to start taking the penalties. So yeah, big, big moments in the game. Obviously, the Ronaldo penalty miss. And he needs to stop whining though. Bro, you are... The guy was whining too much. Like, at some point, I was like, why are you crying? Like, he's being held by the whole team. Dude, you're the captain of the team. You're the eldest player in the team. You're the one who has seen everything. You've won everything, apart from a World Cup. But you've seen everything. You need to bring the team up. Like, you guys, I got your back. I know I missed, but I got your back. The team is there for him. They're really trying to rally the troops. Maybe that was his intention, like, to cry so much until the team is like, yo, we got you, we got you type of thing. Even when he scored his penalty, which was very good, by the way, like Oblak had read it, but he really hit it. But um, yeah, very good penalty. Once he scored his penalty, he even apologized. And when um, but when Diego, Diego, Diego Costa saved the second penalty, you could just see the entire time the camera was just on him. And it's like he loves it. He loves it so much. Um, but yeah, Portugal are through. We all know they need to give him less playing time. Hopefully, now that he has played 120 plus this penalty shootout, they are actually going to... He's going to start the next game. But, like, if things are not going well, you need to take him off. But then, the guy, does, the guy doesn't fear the big moments. That's the thing with Ronaldo. He doesn't fear big moments. And at times, you just need someone like that, you know? Um, it's just that the problem is this one is about 40 years old and he's not giving you much else if he's not being an aerial threat. Um, yeah. Ronaldo. If they somehow get to the final and at least I will give him props for playing every game and, you know, being there for his team. But <sighs> Portugal, Portugal, Portugal. Roberto Martinez. I am I'm, I'm confused. I don't know what I don't know what to feel about this team. And the fact that Belgium just got knocked out on the same day, they both played similarly. You could almost say that he coached both teams. <laughs> Dominic Tedesco is also coaching like a young um, um, Roberto Martinez. But the only difference is Roberto Martinez actually had the talent. Belgium Belgium is talented, but they don't have the talent that Roberto had. So, And had Portugal get, got knocked out today, I mean, definitely he'd have been fired. But that's like two proper teams with proper talent that he, he has just failed to get... Um, to take to the promised land. But yeah, all in all, um, Benjamin Sheshko is not going to sleep tonight. That miss was bad. Like, bad, 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 bad. Um, but he also kind of just, he, he, what do you say? Like, he, he really showed the goalkeeper what he was going to do. By the time he opened up his body and like the keeper was just like, yeah, I know where you're going. But um, yeah, Diego Costa was amazing today. This match today, Diego Costa, I give you props. You are a beast. You're an animal. You deserve everything that is coming to you. So now Portugal are through. They're going to meet France. And if there's anything to go by, if they're going to play like today, that is going to be another slugfest, another boring game. Um, it's just going to be... I really hope it's not boring, man. Or even if it's boring, let it, let's have some drama at the end. But yeah, Portugal are through. Winning 3-0 on penalties. Slovenia are now out. Big shout out to Slovenia um, for giving us a dope tournament. So let me to the round of 16. And yeah, just putting up a fight and an effort. <laughs> but yeah, Portugal need to be way, way better if we are going to win this tournament. But yeah. That's it for me. We're live again tomorrow for the Austria versus Turkey game and then Romania versus Netherlands. We will be live, live, live.